Hello, welcome to another Annoyed Gamer. What's this? It's only a few days after the last one. Well, I told you there'd be benefits. I mean, you sacrifice quality production and editing and talented camera crew and sound and music. And uh, I'm working on the music, by the way. I am trying to license some music to go underneath this. Um, but yes, you sacrifice all that. And what do you get instead? Me being a little more current and I get to do a couple of Annoyed Gamers a week. And what I want to talk about today, oh, those two letters that strike gamers with dread and thrills at the same time, EA. That's right, the people with some of the most awesome uh, titles in their catalog, uh, you know, some of the greatest franchises of all time, who over the last 12, 18 months have really fumbled and really dropped the ball. I mean, Dead Space 3 last year, microtransactions, that led to me being blacklisted by EA, by the way. Um, then there was Battlefield, you know, towards the end of last year, which is still ongoing, still not really working for a lot of people. And then there was the game I want to talk about right now, SimCity. That's right, the game that was the worst video game launch of all time, in my humble opinion. Um, this week, Electronic Arts announced that the hitherto impossible offline mode is finally coming to SimCity. So, yay! Dance, yeah? It's coming next month. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, what? This was the one that they said couldn't be done. And this was the one that the modders managed to get working within a week. Um, okay, well, I'm guessing they wanted to do it right. So that's something. And look, I can imagine it wasn't exactly easy um, having worked on games that were predominantly multiplayer, specifically joined ops when I was at uh, Novologic, uh, when you know we wanted to play a game to test it, we had to throw a server up. I mean, it was one of those things, a local server to test it. And I'm sure, you know, the game was designed, you know, to work from the cloud. I'm talking about SimCity now, was designed to work from that cloud. And I'm sure that, you know, after the ass kicking they've received over the last 12 months, they wanted to get it right. So kudos to them on that. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. I mean, the dev team now in particular, the benefit of the doubt that they can, they actually had to reconstruct and rebuild the game pretty much to include this offline mode. Um, of course, somebody like me would have just said, well, why can't you uh, uh, release a patch that allows me to say, throw up a server on my PC um, and I can connect to that and I can just stick around and I don't have to connect online and I don't have to go anywhere else. I just have to go to the server, perhaps as a workaround, but I'm not a technical expert. So that's possibly not po possible. Possibly not possible. Yeah, anyway. So they're giving that, which is great. They're giving mod tools, which is great. Now we can have those Game of Thrones SimCity uh, mods that we want and the Star Wars ones where we can build Tatooine and Harry Potter and Lego Marvel in SimCity. And oh, hang on, no, we can't. Why can't we? Because the mod tools are a little bit iffy and disingenuous to say the least. It allows you to uh, change the appearance of stuff. Um, but that's about it. Doesn't really allow you to get into the functionality of modding the game and creating brand new content and creating whole new worlds. It's more cosmetic. And then of course, if you come up with something really spanky fantastic, well, the mod license says that EA can take that and EA can sell that and EA owns it and they'll give you a credit. But, you know, this is like the hackathon thing at the end of last year where EA were asking people to create an app, do it in 12 or 24 hours and you can win a trip to an EA studio near you and we'll own your stuff in perpetuity and you won't get any money for it. Yeah, they did take those rules down after somebody told Peter Moore about them, and I'm sure he wasn't very impressed. Um, but again, SimCity's struggling. SimCity needs a strong fan base, a base that is creating fantastic, unique content. And if somebody wants to create some SimCity stuff that elevates the game and makes the game even better than perhaps the designers had ever hoped, that's not a bad thing. I mean, the chances of that happening are kind of small, but they're great, it's a great chance to have. And of course, the other thing is that EA have to protect themselves by putting in, you can't use any licensed content. So that does mean you can't do a Game of Thrones when you can't do anything else. Um, which sucks because I think a lot of other people are getting that if, you, if you're a little more relaxed on the content and on your licenses, 
you get some cool shit because it's only pushing your stuff out there even further, which is not a bad thing. Would it be great to have a SimCity Game of Thrones mod? Absolutely. Would it be great to have a Doctor Who one? Gallifrey Reborn. Yes, that would be fantastic. I don't know how it would work, but it would be fantastic. But I mean, there's so many things that you can do with SimCity. I mean, hell, EA have got the Star Wars license. Unless they're doing a Star Wars pack for SimCity, which you know, wouldn't put it past them. Um, why don't they let people design that for them and then say, oh, look, you've done this. This is cool. We're going to take this. We're going to give you a credit. We're going to help. You, we're going to monetize it. We're going to give you a little portion of it. We're going to tidy it up. We're going to bring you in, train you up, have you work on this stuff. Use the community, reward the community. Don't treat them like your enemies. This is what's wrong with EA. This is not the EA that I dealt with when I was, you know, when I was the first a journalist back in the mid nineties. I remember getting, you know, a VHS sizzle reel from EA with FIFA soccer on it for the first time on the Genesis. And it was this, you know, isometric -y, you know, at an angle, great looking soccer game that nobody had ever seen anything like before because it had all been flat and 2D and everything. And we were all clustered around and we rewound it and rewound it and watched that one minute gameplay demo over and over till we almost broke the tape. And then the guys from EA came up from their headquarters in the UK and they brought us a ROM. And we got to play it and we played with them and we had beers and we had pizza and we had a great time. And they loved the game. They could see we loved the game. And then the same happened with Jungle Strike and Desert Strike and Road Rash and Need for Speed. And they did all that great stuff on the 3DO. Madden was fantastic and EA was helping. EA was going out and talking to people. EA was enjoying what they were doing. And then it went a little bit shitty. And it's continued to get shitty. EA seems to view the consumer as its enemy. And that's not good. The consumer, the, the gamer, we're not your enemies. We don't want to call you out. We don't want to look at everything you do with a healthy distrust. But we do right now because you're just pulling shit. And I'm sorry, the PR team, they're probably you know, hoist by their own petard in that they can't really do anything because the upper management are telling them to do X, Y, and Z. Maybe EA's got too big. Maybe there are too many studios out there. Maybe there are too many cooks in the broth. EA needs to get a lot friendlier. If they do, we'll love them. Hell, we're two months away from Titanfall. Titanfall looks really cool. But unfortunately, Titanfall has EA attached to it. I pray to God that Respawn are managing the servers. I pray to God that Respawn have been operating in a, you know, a bubble. You know, that this deal allows them to do what they want to do when they want to do it and how they want to do it. I hope they're not being forced into a bunch of shitty server choices because Battlefield and SimCity have shown that EA just can't handle that stuff. I mean, I hope Xbox Live is strong enough. I'm sure Microsoft, having plonked down a shitload of money to make this an exclusive game, are putting lots of resources behind it so we won't have these server problems. Hopefully, it's, you know, Microsoft are hosting the servers and their Xbox Live and whatever, and it's great. Because Titanfall is a multiplayer only game. And one that is just going to be a huge seller for Xbox One, for EA, for Microsoft, for Respawn, and hopefully a great game for us gamers to get into and have some fun in something that's not Call of Duty, world modern combat-y type game. It's futuristic, it's got mechs, it's easy to get into apparently, and I'm looking forward to it. I know I'm on the blacklist and I won't get a copy, but I'm gonna go buy a copy. That's how excited I am for it. And I pray to God that they've let Respawn handle this because Respawn know how to do shit. So yes, EA, you're trying. You do have that worst company in America tag that you need to live down. Two steps forward, four steps back right now. Treat the gamer as your friend, as your partner. Because let's face it, that's the hand that feeds you. And right now you're biting. You're gnawing the hand that feeds you. The media doesn't feed you. Microsoft doesn't feed you. PlayStation doesn't feed you. It's the gamers. It's the ones who plonk down 60 bucks whether it be through Origin, which is a vast bit of profit there because you have no middleman, or whether it be for an Xbox Live game or a PS4 game or whatever it is. So yeah, 
EA, sort it out. You're better than this. Crack on in 2014. Take stock. Look at what's going wrong with your company. And reboot, man. You've got to reboot. All right. That's the show for today. Um, don't know when the next one will be up. A couple of days. See who pisses me off next. Uh, reviews are coming. Um, I didn't really want to go and review a bunch of old stuff from last year. So there are a couple of games coming in the mail. So I will be doing my review soon, which is great. As always, follow me on the Twitter. Um, please like and share. And I know I'm begging and asking. Uh, like and share this video and subscribe because that just gets this stuff out there a little bit more and gives me a little more um, impetus, a little more, I don't know. It puts me back on the radar with a lot of people. Um, I mean, I still do my NBC stuff, but obviously stepping from game trailers to this, it's a, it's a different world. But anyway, yeah, who knows the next time, there might even be music. Wow. Later.